I'm Laurie Thomas with the University of Kentucky Forestry and Natural Resources Extension, and I'm here with the tree of the week, the Kentucky coffee tree. Kentucky coffee tree, Gymnocladus dioecus, was at one time the state tree of Kentucky, but it is now the state heritage tree. It is also known as coffee tree, American coffee bean, American coffee berry, and coffee bean tree. It is in the Fabaceae or the pea family, but it does not have the nitrogen-fixing bacterium, the rhizobium species, on its root system in the form of nodules like many trees in the Fabaceae family do. It is one of three species in the genus Gymnocladus. The other two are native to East Asia and Burma, the Chinese coffee tree and the Burmese coffee tree. The Kentucky coffee tree is a medium-sized tree that can reach the height of about 70 feet tall. It's relatively fast growing when young, and then the growth rate slows as the tree ages. Kentucky coffee tree's coarse silhouette makes for an interesting landscape tree. Kentucky coffee tree is somewhat uncommon in its native range of the central states, with pockets from Pennsylvania to Nebraska and from Minnesota to Oklahoma. It occurs in parts of Kentucky, typically on limestone soils, especially the bluegrass region. It is adaptable to a variety of soils, but does best in moist, loamy soils and prefers full sunlight. It does tolerate urban pollution and is quite drought tolerant. Kentucky coffee tree has very large, alternately arranged leaves. The leaves are bipinnately compound, which means a leaf that is divided into multiple leaflets with each leaflet further subdivided into smaller leaflets. We also call this doubly compound. The leaves are typically between one to three feet long, and as you can see in the photo, they're really big leaves. The leaflets are ovate in shape with entire or smooth margins. They're green above and slightly paler below during the summer. The tree typically leaves out much later than most of its associates. The leaves tend to be yellowish gold in autumn and they'll drop pretty early. The tree tends to have an open or airy canopy which creates a more of a semi-shade which is also helpful if you want to grow other plants underneath it. Kentucky coffee tree is dioecious which means there are female trees and there are male trees. The flowers are greenish white in panicles at the tips of branches, which leads to zigzag branching pattern in Kentucky coffee tree. The female flowers are in 8 to 12 inch long panicles, and the male flowers are in 3 to 4 inch long panicles. They bloom late in spring after the leaves have emerged, and they are pollinated by insects including bumblebees, longhorned bees, and butterflies. The fruit is a large woody pot. It's typically three to eight inches long and about one and a half to two inches wide. It's greenish before ripening to a reddish brown. Inside the pod there are six or more dark brown seeds that are embedded in a sticky pulp. The seeds are reputed to contain a toxic alkaloid cytosine. The pods can remain on the tree throughout the winter. The seed pods can also be a nuisance in the landscape, especially areas that are regularly mowed. They are very hard and can be shot from a lawnmower running over the fruit. The Kentucky coffee tree would not be categorized as an important wildlife tree today. The caterpillars of honey locust moth and the bisected honey locust moth feed on the foliage, and groundhogs have been observed to occasionally browse the seedlings, but other mammals avoid the tree and the fruit, possibly due to the toxicity. Due to this toxicity, it is recommended to not have this tree where there is livestock. There is some speculation that the seed pods may have been eaten by the extinct American mastodon and possibly other Ice Age mammals. The bark of Kentucky coffee tree is tannish to grayish brown. It's scaly and develops fissures with scaly ridges. The heartwood of Kentucky coffee tree is orangish to reddish brown and the sapwood is yellowish to white. It is a ring porous species with large early wood pores, those are the ones that are formed in the spring, and numerous small late wood pores, those are the ones that are formed into late summer into the fall. It is reported to be moderately durable to durable and decay resistance. The wood of Kentucky coffee tree along with black locust and honey locust is fluorescent when viewed under black light, and the Kentucky coffee tree wood tends to be bright, uniform yellow or green. Kentucky coffee tree wood is used for cabinetry, fence post, as a utility wood, and for small turned and carved pieces. It's used as a street tree as far north as Montreal because it resists the harsh winters and de-icing salts.
It's also used as a landscape tree because of its attractive winter silhouette, and there are several cultivars including Espresso, Prairie Titan, and Stately Manor. All three of these cultivars are male varieties and therefore do not produce seed pods, which some homeowners find undesirable. The national champion Kentucky coffee tree is in Montgomery, Maryland. It is 198 inches in circumference, 106 feet tall, with a 77 foot crown spread. The Kentucky champion Kentucky coffee tree is in Harrison County. It is 133 inches in circumference, 126 feet tall, with an 87 foot crown spread. If you'd like to know more about champion trees, check out American Forest Champion Tree Register or check out the Kentucky Division of Forestry Champion Trees. Now for a few fun facts about Kentucky coffee tree. The name Kentucky coffee tree was promoted by early land developers who wanted to get settlers out to the far west, which included Kentucky at the time. Coffee, a popular beverage, was expensive and hard to find far away from coastal ports. So land developers advertised Kentucky as a place where a tree grew with beans that could be roasted and brewed to make a fine coffee substitute. Although drinkable, the beverage was no substitute for coffee, and the early settlers quickly dropped it as soon as the real thing became available. It's been said that Thomas Jefferson acquired Kentucky coffee tree seeds from General George Rogers Clark, who served as the leader of the militia in Kentucky, which was part of Virginia throughout much of the Revolutionary War. Supposedly, he received the seeds around 1783, which he then planted at Monticello. Several Eastern Native American cultures consumed the beans after roasting, and the beans were used for games like dice and used for jewelry and for ceremonial purposes. Gymnocladus dioecus is the botanical name for the Kentucky coffee tree. Gymnos is the Greek word for naked, and klados is Greek for branch, which refers to the large, coarse branches. And the species name dioecus refers to the tree's dioecious nature. Thank you for joining me to learn more about the Kentucky coffee tree. I hope you get the opportunity to get out in your woodland, local park, or neighborhood, and check out this Kentucky native.